Hello guys, my name is Ibukun and welcome to another edition of Makeup and Gs. I run this little thing called Makeup and Gs where I do my makeup while talking about an historical event. So guys, we just hit 100 subscribers. And I'm super, super, super excited. If you are new here, please subscribe. Please join the family. You would have so much fun here. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So guys, one thing about me is I'm a lover of love. I love love. I'm that kind of person that watches romantic movies and starts crying. Yeah, this is me. I'm that girl. I'm here. So guys, I'm going to run a series called African Marriages That Shook the World. So to launch is this story I'm going to call love brewed in the Ghanaian port <laughs> now i'm going to draw my brows and i'll be back please don't go anywhere we are in the saint john's church now there's a wedding going on there's a white woman she's wearing a pearl embroidered silk brocade and she looks Mwah. groom is a man <laughs> of course it's with my man <laughs> that is it her groom is wearing a kente cloth and he's, he's looking gorgeous now i know you might be thinking well it's just a wedding there's nothing special going on when i tell you that the year is 1953 it is rare it is unheard of it is an abomination it shouldn't happen that a white woman is marrying a black man this wedding is causing a commotion there's a media frenzy this wedding is all over the world because how how does a black man marry a white woman and this is not just an ordinary white woman this is a daughter of a lord chancellor a former chancellor of britain this is a woman that has like she knows the way to the buckingham palace like she can actually when she goes to the buckingham palace they can open the gates for her this is a woman that has direct lineage to the royal family so now in south africa the minister of justice charles swartz he opens the newspaper and he sees the wedding and he says hm, disgusting in zambia a correspondent of a local paper uses the sentence these pictures are enough to turn the stomach of a pig <laughs> another paper writes let me read this out this is an insult to every right-minded european and a dangerous threat to their political stability Man, these guys are really dramatic. So, as you can see from this carriage, people are not having this wedding. People are angry. People are pissed. Let's talk about the couple. Let's talk about Peggy Apia and Joe Apia. So, Joe Apia was born as Joseph Emmanuel Apia. He was born to Nana James Apia and Nana Ajua Echan, which were members of the Ashanti royal family that's like the, so you call them aristocrats so his father was like the secretary of the asantehini chief secretary of the asantehini i don't know if that's the same thing as ochiami please let me know in the comments so joe Apia went to school in ghana for some time he went to wesley college in france and then afterwards he went to the uk to go to study law so now it's outside that he becomes really involved in the pan africanist notion he becomes friends with Nkrumah and then they form something called the West West Africa Students Union. So that group is just like talking about the evils of British colonialism and imperialism and they just want to get independence. So like that's like the branch in UK fighting for independence for Ghana and African nations. Now he went on to become the president. So now that we've gotten that base history of Joe Apia down now let's talk about peggy now peggy was born as enid margaret cripps now she was born to an upper middle class family what's the upper middle class then so guys she was born to right honorable sir stafford cripps and dame isobel cripps she was a pretty low-key kid they said she loved plants growing up and she because she and her sister they were members of something called wild flower society with people's problems so that was a diplomat was an ambassador so that means like she did a lot of traveling around when she was a kid she grew up in china she went to moscow she had met a lot of people yeah, so she grew up in a very active political community so her dad would later on go on to become the chancellor of britain and then he would also he's also the leader of the house of commons 
and he, i think her uncles were also like mps and politicians in 1951 peggy is working in a group called racial unity and then they are invited to a dance like stand up okay uh, i don't know if that's what happened but i'm sure that's what just happened she's just sitting there with her friends like having a good time and then this handsome black man walks in and it's like hi my name is job yeah kind of interested to a dance she's like sure i'd like to dance and then they both started dancing after dancing it was like okay can i take a number oh, <laughs> did they have did they have phones at that time i'm not sure they had phones though but he said can i call you and she was like yeah call me please it's nice to see ya and that's how they became friends they're doing bestie bestie hi bestie from 1951 to 1953 he now proposed to her that peggy would you make me the happiest man on this earth marry me oh my god yes 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 i'll marry you oh my god i'm so excited oh my god as he proposed now joy is like okay when can we announce it to the world when can we announce that we're engaged to the world and peggy is like oh my god joe i think we need to wait for some time because my dad is ill and then i want him to get better before we can announce our engagement and he's like okay that's fine that works for me i'm good so they're just like keeping it hush hush no one knows about the engagement just them it's like a low-key thing between them and they're waiting for her dad to get well unfortunately her dad passes away and he never got to hear of the engagement but then peggy tells her mom that okay so she and Joe up here are engaged and they're going to get married and the mom blesses them married. like that's such a good mother i mean because not every mom will be having that like having your child marry someone is a different race and this is a time where such things are like on the head of but during that time that peggy's dad has passed Joe's great grand uncle too had also passed away and remember that we said that he was part of the aristocratic family so joe had to like go back and take control of his his uncle's role so like now the role has passed to joe so joe goes to ghana and he leaves peggy in britain now peggy is in britain i'm sure she's missing her husband so much and her dad has passed so she talks to her mom and her mom is like sure why don't you since you're going to marry this man you might as well know where he comes from know his family so why don't you fly to ghana to be with your your husband so Peggy now enters a plane and flies to Ghana. She goes to Kumasi. That is where Joe is from. And then they like she meets his family and they spend some time together. And people are even asking her that, oh, what is she doing here? And she says that, oh, because she's from like a political family in the UK, she's just coming to check Ghana and just like see what's up, one to one. So they're like, oh, okay. So they're still keeping their engagement hash hash. Nobody really knows that they are engaged to be married. And she meets all the squad. She meets in Kuma. She meets the Asante Hene. She meets like all his squad. They got engaged in 1952. So in 1953, now she's 32 years. And then they finally announced their wedding, their engagement to the world. That's okay, guys, we are going to get married. Now they said she announced it in an after party in the Buckingham Palace. Like how? I can imagine the shock people actually had on that day. Then, oh my god, you can imagine the media frenzy begin. Everyone is talking about it. Everybody is all over newspapers. They said the dates for the wedding, and it's rumored that Nkuma is going to be the best man. But the time Nkuma was busy, was busy with with Ghana fighting for her independence, so he couldn't make it. So he chose another person called um, George Padmore. Who is said to be from Trinidad, and they also said like he's like a mentor, like to the nationalist. So it was actually a, a huge thing to have him as a best man. After the wedding, they decided to go on a honeymoon to France, and then he went. He came back to the UK to the Middle Temple to finish his law training. In May 1954, their first son, their first child, was born. Now his name was Kwame Apia. And then in November, the whole family came to Ghana where he would help Nkuma and become like very active in Ghanaian politics. So that Peggy really adapted well to Ghanaian life. 
she became immersed in um, Ashanti arts and culture. Hi guys, Ruth from the future here. So I was editing my videos and I realized that I got a little bit carried away. I spent a lot of time talking about life after the marriage, which is very interesting by the way. So I'm sorry, there are going to be some gaps in the story because I'm trying to keep it really short. And if you really want to know more about life in Ghana for both Peggy Apia and Joe Apia, um, please let me know in the comments and I will do a story about that because that story too is really, really, really interesting. All right, guys, you're amazing. And let's jump back right into the story. And her husband passes away and people are asking her like, your husband, the man is dead. Won't you go back to your hometown? Won't you go back to your home? And she replies that this is my home. I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. She buys a piece of land next to where her husband is buried so that she can also be buried beside her husband. So Peggy passes away on the 11th of February, 2006 from undisclosed causes at the Okonfo Anna Chitichin Hospital. And she is buried beside her husband at the Tafo Cemetery. So guys, I'm going to wear my lashes and lips and then we just like talk about the story. Okay guys, so I am back. I, I felt really cute though, like so cute. Hey, focus, which rich auntie is this? Now, it's said that occurrences like this, like a black man marrying a white woman was reasons why the colonial masters were even afraid to give the black men visas because they were afraid that they would come and take all the white women away. <laughs> but again, I'm thinking, so what, what were our colonial masters thinking? You would colonize countries, you mix two races, and then you don't expect people to fall in love. Like, does that make any sense? story just reminds me of one of those occasions where you can't really control people's behavior like when two people are in love when nothing nothing can tear them apart this concludes our first part of african marriages that shook the world so i have another story next week this one caused international crisis like that's how powerful the next story will be but guys thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end i really really appreciate you and please subscribe if you haven't please subscribe guys let's really grow this channel please Turn on the notification bell to be alerted anytime I post new videos. And then I will see you soon. And stay safe, guys. Bye. They are back again. They are back again.